Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studios and welcome back to the channel. So V-Ray 7 Update 2 is out with a lot of powerful features and it looks like we finally get to see some AI features in V-Ray. We're talking AI generated materials to enhance rendering tools and real time collaboration. So in this video, I'm going to check out all of the features and see what could possibly make in V-Ray for SketchUp. Let's dive in. So the first feature is AI material generation. You can now generate a full PBR material from a single image directly inside of Chaos Cosmo. All you have to do is hit the generate button in the material section, upload your photo, and let AI create the albedo, normal, and roughness maps automatically. And the result is a render ready material without the hassle of searching or building it from scratch. And yes, this is a fully editable V-Ray material, so you can layer, blend, and tweak just like any other material in your scene. So AI material generation, pretty amazing feature in my opinion. And this to me is the right way to use AI to help in architectural visualization. So I think this is an easy inclusion in V-Ray for SketchUp. Next, we have an AI enhancer. I am very happy to see this make it into the V-Ray platform. This feature gives your people, vegetation, and fine details a big boost in realism. With a single click, you simply add an enhancer data render element before rendering. Once that is done, it sends your image to the cloud. You click enhance and it's done. This improves facial features, closing textures, leaves, and all the subtle things that elevate your render without the extra work. You can even toggle between the original and enhanced version to see the difference side by side. I can't wait to try this if it makes it to V-Ray for SketchUp. We've been requesting AI features in V-Ray for a long time, and I'm glad that we finally get to try this out with V-Ray. It would be great to see how this fares in comparison to the ones in other rendering engines. So I'm very curious to see Chaos approach with this AI feature. The new Night Sky is the latest addition to the V-Ray Sun and Sky system. In previous version, it supported the nautical twilights. And now you can create more atmospheric scenes with stars, moon, and even the Milky Way. All you have to do is lower the V-Ray Sun below the horizon enable the stars and customize their intensity, brightness, and the size. You can also add the moon, adjust its position, and tweak its phase, so you can easily go from a crescent to a full moon. You can also sync it with the daylight system for accurate sky position, which is perfect for storytelling and cinematic vibes. This is definitely something that is nice to have. You can see that with each update, the V-Ray Sun and Sky system improves more and more, so you can depend less on HDRIs and create everything right inside of V-Ray. Next, we have Gaussian Splat, which now supports Flipping Mask, making it easier to blend your 3D model into scanned environments. Gaussian Splat was introduced with V-Ray 7, allowing you to import real-life environments to interact with your 3D model. This is a completely new feature, so it's great to see some improvements. So you define a mask shape where your model will go, and then you use a V-Ray distance texture to blend it naturally into the rest of the splat. This is obviously a game changer for site context, early design visualization, and urban planning. And we already have Gaussian splat with V-Ray for SketchUp, so this is likely going to be an easy addition. Next, we have Chaos Cloud 3D Streaming. Now, this is a really cool feature. This lets you share a full project with your clients and teammates right in their browser. So you simply upload your scene and collaborators can explore it in real time without any additional software. So they can switch cameras, pan, orbit, zoom, and even save new views. And the best part is that they can leave comments directly in the 3D views for feedback. Now, because this is on the cloud, I think it can be done in the same way virtual tour was added in the last update. Next, we have scatter clustering. The new clustering feature makes scatter feel and look more natural. The objects that you scatter are grouped together into more realistic formation, instantly making your scene feel more organic. Now you can tweak clustering size, rotation and behavior and use settings like roughness, edge blend and diversity to control how objects spill outside of their groups. 
And for even more control, you can use a color map to guide exactly where things go with a custom texture, or you can paint assets directly into your scene with the paint tool. So whether you're adding small details or blending between different areas, these new clustering and painting tools will give you total creativity of placing objects with speed and procedural generation. Next, we have the multi sub texture improvements. The multi sub texture now lets you control everything in one place. So we have two big updates here. One, we get a new mapping source that lets you control node. And two, you have a probability column that lets you define how often each texture appears for precise material variation across objects. So this is great for materials like brick, floor tiles, cobblestone and wooden planks. Now, when it comes to VR for SketchUp, I'm not sure if this gets added in the new multi-sub procedural map or in the UVW placement setting, which already includes randomization settings. So either way, this will be great in V-Ray for SketchUp. So next we have a light mix improvement and light mix is already a great feature. It allows you to adjust intensity, color, and even turn lights on and off after you've rendered your scene. Now, I personally didn't know it only supported 64 lights, but it turns out it now supports 256 unique lights. So that means you can fine tune way more lights during post without re-rendering your scene. We already have light mix, so this is an easy win of a feature to be included. Next, we have improved exposure layer. Now the new exposure layer in control of color correction gives you a granular control of your image. You can adjust shadows, highlights, white and black values all in one place. The show clip warning option is great for spotting blowout areas. And if you use specific shortcuts, it lets you isolate each parameter's effect for cleaner adjustment. Once again, this will be a great feature for the SketchUp V-Ray frame buffer. Now, there are also a couple of other improvements. For example, the V-Ray GPU now supports Gaussian Splat, the new Night Sky, Material Selection, Render Element, V-Ray Luminaires, and a couple of other features. Chaos Cloud Rendering is now faster and more affordable thanks to the new hardware and RTX upgrades and many other features that are specific to V-Ray for 3ds Max. So if you want to see the full list of features, be sure to check the Chaos original video for V-Ray 7.2. The link will be in the description as well as on the corner of the screen. And that's mostly everything in V-Ray 7 update 2, which to me is a huge step forward. We got AI tools, enhanced realism, and better collaboration all in one update. So let me know in the comment section which feature you are most excited about, especially in the V-Ray for SketchUp platform. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.